Welcome to Sona Watch. This is my spoiler review for Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. If you haven't already, please smash the subscribe button and click on that bell so you can notify for future videos. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up. And yes, after watching Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny in the theaters opening weekend, I gotta say this movie was awesome. Just awesome. James Mangold did a fantastic job with this movie. I mean, it had everything in an Indiana Jones movie that I ever wanted. You know what I mean? Now, I'm not gonna sit here and say this is my number one Indiana Jones movie of all time. I mean, if I had to rank it right now of all the Indiana Jones movies that we've gotten over the years, I don't know, it's probably like maybe like the third or fourth spot. I mean, I like Temple of Doom, but it's not one of my, I mean, I don't know. This could easily go in the number three spot, but it's recently biased. I just watched this movie, so that could change. But right now, all I can say is this movie was fantastic. I mean, it had awesome chase scenes, narrow escapes, globe trotting, tracking down all the clues, which is one of the things about Indiana Jones movies that I really like. You know what I mean? And we had even a little bit of time travel in this thing but there's time, time travel or multiverse in every other movie we've gotten so far right so why not now with a runtime of 154 minutes that's a little over two and a half hours i thought the pacing in this movie was pretty decent i mean i saw people online saying that oh man they got chopped off like 10 15 minutes off that movie that movie was too long it's two and a half hours i mean endgame was three hours you know and i didn't think that this movie felt like two and a half hours i didn't i wasn't sitting there at any point going oh man can we hurry up and, you know i mean i didn't get that for at least i didn't get that i mean i thought the pacing was good i thought we just jumped right into the story we wasted no time like we get to see at the very beginning which like i said this is a spoiler review but at the very beginning we go right into like the whole like a dh harrison ford thing he's trying to track you know this artifact down from the germans like and why not to come to find out it's fake but then he they end up finding the part of this dial thing and then you think if at first you think that he gave it back to him and he lost it and you come to find out no he didn't lose it he had it the whole entire time you know and now again i saw people online bitching about the cgi saying oh man it wasn't really all that good i didn't think it was really all that bad i mean you know what i mean i it didn't bother me at all i mean i kind of like the deep fake thing because i think that looks a little bit better but this looked just as good as anything else as far as i'm concerned i mean i believe that he was harrison ford at that age i mean i don't know that's just me i was so enthralled with the action and stuff like that i didn't really even had a chance to really even look at the cgi all that close indiana jones and the dial of destiny is a 2023 american action adventure film directed by james mangold and co written by Mangold, Jez Butterworth, John Henry Butterworth, and David Kemp. Produced by Walt Disney Pictures and Lucasfilm and distributed by Walt Disney Studios Motion Pictures. The film is a sequel to Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull from 2008 and serves as the fifth and final installment in the Indiana Jones franchise. Set in 1969, the film follows Indiana Jones and his estranged goddaughter Helen Shaw, trying to locate the device that could change the course of history. Before Jürgen Waller, a Nazi turned NASA scientist, can and get it for himself and alter the outcome of World War II to correct Adolf Hitler's past mistakes. Dial of Destiny is the first and only film in the series that is neither directed by Steven Spielberg nor written by George Lucas, with both serving as executive producers instead. It is also the only film in the series not to be distributed by Paramount Pictures. Following Walt Disney Studios' acquisition of Lucasfilm, that transfer the film rights for future sequels. Paramount instead retains distribution rights to the first four films and a residual associate credit. Plans for the fifth Indiana Jones film go back to the late 1970s when Lucas and Spielberg negotiated with Paramount for four sequels to Raiders of the Lost Ark in 1981. Lucas began researching potential plot devices for the fifth film in 2008, although the project stalled for years. Kep was eventually hired to write the fifth film in 2016, with the release date set for 2019. Although this was a delay several times due to rewrites and later the COVID-19 pandemic, in 2018 John Kazan was hired to replace Kemp, who returned to write in 2019, before eventually leaving the project. Spielberg was to direct, but stepped down in 2020, with Mangold taking his place. Filming began in June of 2021, taking place in various locations including the United Kingdom, Italy, and Morocco, and wrapped up in February of 2022, with the reported production budget of 295 million dollars it is the most expensive film in the indiana jones franchise as well as one of the most expensive films ever made indiana jones and the dial of destiny had its world premiere at the 76th Cannes film festival on may 18th of 2023 and was released in the united states on june 
30th of 2023. The film has received mixed reviews from the critics who praised Ford's performance, Mangold's direction, and the action sequences, but criticized the overuse of CGI and consider the film inferior to previous installments. Starring in this movie, Harrison Ford, John Reese davis Karen Allen, Phoebe Waller-Bridge, Antonio Banderas, Toby Jones, Boyd Holbrook, Ethan Isidore, and Mads Mikkelsen, just to name a few. Coming out of opening weekend, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny sit in the Rotten Tomato score of 68%, where 307 top critics reporting in. Now, almost three quarters of those top critics is like in this movie. Now, the general consensus of those top critics is this. It isn't as thrilling as earlier adventures, but the nostalgic rush of seeing Harrison Ford back in action helps Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny find a few bits of cinematic treasure. Now, I guess I kind of agree with that. Again, I like this movie. I mean, it's not my most favorite Indiana Jones movie, but I had a lot of fun with this movie. I, I have no complaints about this movie whatsoever, other than the fact that the people in my theater did not know how to shut the hell up. I mean, the people in front of me, you thought that they were in their living room. I was waiting for them to start whipping out their phones. They were talking through the whole damn thing, man. It's like, just shut the hell up, dude, and watch the movie. I mean, but I knew I was in for a treat because, like, during the previews, like, there was, like, the Blue Beetle trailer was playing and stuff like that, and George Lopez said something about, you know, Batman being a fascist, and then this guy, oh, screw you, George. I mean, like, Dude, relax. It's just a trailer. It's just a movie, man. They wasn't talking to you. Over on the audience side, it's sitting with a score of 88% with 2,500 plus fans telling you what they think. Now, majority of the fans are loving this movie, but you really wouldn't know it if you looked at the box office. I mean, it managed to take number one at the box office for the weekend, but it only is bringing in like with an estimate of $60 million for the weekend domestically. Now, they're saying it pretty much making like $70 million internationally, which brings it to $132 million worldwide for the opening weekend which is not all that great because like i said during the information portion of the video their budget was 295 million dollars and you only brought in 132 million dollars your opening weekend that's not good especially now the next two weeks they're going to have to go up against some big movies i mean next weekend is tom cruise's mission impossible dead reckoning part one that movie looks totally phenomenal it's getting awesome buzz and stuff like that for like i don't I mean, I don't know, man. That's going to probably be the number one movie of next week. I don't know how much that movie is going to make, but I guarantee you that movie is going to be number one. So it's going to definitely take Indiana Jones out of number one. You know what I'm saying? And then the week after that, we've got Barbie and Oppenheimer. Now, I'll have to admit, when I first saw the, the teaser trailer for Barbie, I'm like, this movie looks stupid. But then I saw that full trailer. I'm like, this movie looks kind of interesting. I don't know. So, And they're saying that Barbie's going to beat Oppenheimer that weekend. So Indiana Jones don't stand a chance. So, And like I said before in other videos, majority of your fans that want to see a movie, they go within the first two or three weeks maybe at least in the first two weeks and after that that's it man because especially nowadays after the pandemic and with theatrical run of like only 45 days most people like man they'll go oh you know i'll just wait for it to be on streaming you know what i mean so they, they don't bother to go into theaters i mean my theater didn't have that many people in it it was like more people than normal but there really wasn't that many people in that theater and like the box office kind of shows that so like i said before if i had to rank this movie out of all the other indiana jones movies here's my rankings at number one, I've got Indiana Jones in the Last Crusade. Now, I know most people's number one is Raiders of the Lost Ark, but mine is The Last Crusade because we had the great Sean Connery in that movie. I love the father and son dynamic between the two. And I just, to me, I, that movie is, that's my favorite one. I, I, I know that's probably like an unpopular opinion, but Indiana Jones in the Last Crusade is my number one Indiana Jones movie, followed by at number two is Indiana Jones and Raiders of the Lost Ark, mainly because that was like the first movie of the series, right? And then when I was a kid, my cousin was watching us because my parents were out of town on vacation and what have you. And then we were to go see that movie and we had to eat some kind of really weird ass meal in order to go see that movie. You eat this and then you can go see that movie. So it's like, you know, we ate it and we went, you know, we got to go see that movie and we had a great time and stuff like that. And I bring it up all the time with her and stuff like that. I'm like, you know, she'll be posting something on Facebook about like making some weird meal and stuff like that. I'm like, what movie do I get to see if I eat that? And she kind of you're never gonna let that go no i'm not mm -mm. nope i'm not so again that's one of my fun childhood memories for 
Raiders of the Lost Ark, but other than that, it's at number two in my rankings. Now, at number three, as of right now, it could be Temple of Doom. It could be the Dial of Destiny. I mean, I don't know. I, it's kind of going back and forth with me as of right now because I like Temple of Doom because, you know, short round and everything, but I don't know, this movie, I don't know. Once I see this movie again, I'll have to get back to you on that one, but right now, it kind of goes back and forth between Temple of Doom and Dial of Destiny at number three and number four, and of course, at number five, we've got Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull. Now, I'll be totally honest with you. I've only watched that movie once, and I didn't really care for it, so I haven't really gone back and rewatched it or anything, and it kind of almost seems like I maybe I need to, just like to go back and rewatch it. Maybe it wasn't as bad as I thought it was, because I talked to a couple other people. Oh, man, I like that movie. I'm like, I don't know, man. He jumped in the refrigerator. I mean, I definitely guess I need to go rewatch that movie. You know what I'm saying? And as much as I don't really care for that movie, I was kind of digging it that they actually acknowledged that movie in this movie. I mean, granted, they did kill Shia LaBeouf's character off in this movie. He went off to the Vietnam War and he didn't come back home, which is kind of a bummer because that happened a lot and what have you. But I kind of wish I would have saw that dynamic between Indiana Jones and him before he went. You know what I mean? I mean, they kind of established that, that he did it just to piss him off and everything. But I guess I kind of wish we could have seen some of that beforehand. You know what I mean? Maybe it's just me. But that's like the thing about this movie because we see that he's about to retire from the school that he teaches us at. He's not, not with his wife right now because they lost their son in the war. So she's like stricken with grief and stuff like that. And it kind of like, was like ruining their marriage. And it was, wasn't really, I don't know, that, that kind of got me like right here. It's, it, you know you know what I'm saying? Because that can happen. I thought that was like a good touch to the story because like, it, I mean, maybe it's just me. As far as that goes, I thought that was pretty cool. I thought the underwater dive scene was pretty interesting. I mean, Antonio Banderas was pretty awesome in this movie. You know, spoilers, he did not make it through this movie, which is kind of a bummer. But then again, they're not going to do another movie anyway. So it is what it is. I mean, there was a lot of innocent deaths in this movie. I mean, those teachers, I mean, they had nothing to do with anything. But they, you know, I mean, I, th I thought that was kind of weird as far as that goes. And I don't remember that happening in any other Indiana Jones movies. I don't know. Let me know what you think about that in the comments down below. I mean, and the time travel with this thing. Now, when they were about ready to go through the portal or whatever you want to call it and what have you. And then, you know, Indy finally realized that, you know, Archimedes didn't know anything about continental drift. So he didn't put that in his equation and stuff like this. So we're not going where you think we're going. And then, you know, they tried to pull back around, but they, it was already too late. And when they finally realized where they were, I thought that was pretty interesting. Now, I did not notice the propellers on the sarcophagus thing or whatever that they found until they pointed it out. I mean, when they were kind of looking at it and stuff like that, I didn't notice it at first. And when they pointed it out, I'm like, oh, okay. You know, when Indy said he wanted to stay there and, and what have you, because he probably thought he was going to die anyway. And, you know, and they're like, no, you can't stay here because that really would have had a deep impact on time after that because if he didn't die like shortly after that you know they would have probably wouldn't have gone that well but i'm glad that you know they didn't let him stay and they end up going back and that was like one of the cool things about this movie was the very end scene where he's like well who who am i here for and then marion shows up again and like they have like a, you know, like a send off. I thought that was awesome. You know, it's kind of like a callback to Raiders of the Lost Ark and stuff like that. That kind of scene, I thought that was really cool. I mean, that really got to me like right here. I'm like, oh man. So I don't know. Harrison Ford already said he's not going to do any more of these movies. They already said this is the fifth and the final installment. And this thing is not doing well at the box office. So I don't really see them even trying to make another movie. Now I could see them trying to reboot this thing later on down the road, but whether or not they actually do that or not, who knows? Because they've been talking about redoing like a new, reboot or sequel to back to the future for years and they haven't right i mean granted there's other circumstances involved but they still but they've been talking about it for years and they haven't done it yet so i don't know man at the end of the day i like this movie i had a lot of fun with this movie and i can't wait to see it again i mean whether or not i get to see it again in the theaters or not who knows maybe i kind of like to see it again in the theaters but we'll just have to wait and see how that goes so did you get a chance to go check out indiana jones and the dial of destiny let me know in the comments down below so what did you think did you like the movie let me know in the comments down below and where does it rank with you with the other Indiana Jones movies. I mean, again, I'm going to give you what my rankings are and I can't wait to see this movie again. I liked it. I had a great time. And that's what I go to the movies for, right? So let me know what you think in the comments down below.